Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets. In this video, we are going to see how to implement JWT authentication in Ocelot API Gateway. Also, I am showing the rate limiting functionality of API Gateway in the same video. We can implement the authentication mechanism either in Ocelot API Gateway or in the APIs behind API Gateway. Let me know which one you prefer to implement in the comments section. Also, just explain why you prefer that. It will help others as well. Anyway, in this video, I'll be showing you both. So let's get started. I've created a new solution and added our previous microservices and API gateway into it. In the microservices solution folder, you can see the customer web API, order web API and product web API, which we have created in our previous videos. And in the API Gateway folder, we have the Ocelot API Gateway project. So now, let's add a new project to the solution in which we are going to implement the JWT authentication methods. I'm searching for class library project template and selecting it. Let the project name be JWT Authentication Manager. Framework is the same as we used before. Let me create the project. We can remove the auto created class. Now we can install the libraries needed for JWD authentication from Nugget Package Manager. Let's navigate to the Browse tab. The first library we need is Microsoft.IdentityModel.Tokens. Let me install it. The second library is System.identitymodel.tokens.jwt Installing that as well. Now the final library is Microsoft.aspnetcore.authentication.jwt bearer. Next, I'm creating a new class with the name JWT Token Handler. First, I am declaring a string constant for JWT security key. You should provide a very strong security key. Next, I am declaring an integer constant for JWT token validity in minutes. I need the token to be valid only for 20 minutes. You can provide whatever duration you need. Now, I am creating a constructor for this JWT token handler class. Before providing the constructor method, let's create a model class for user accounts in the models folder. In user account model class, the first property we need is username. Next, we need password. Also, we can include role so that I can show you role based authorization. Let me remove the unnecessary usings. For showing the demo, I'm hard coding some user accounts, but you don't need to do this. You can directly fetch the user data from your database. In the constructor, I'm adding two hard-coded users. First one is an admin user with the password admin123 and the role is administrator. Next is user01 with user01 password and user role. Now let's add the model class for authentication request. So in the authentication request, we'll just receive the username and password. I'm also creating one more model class for authentication response. If the user authentication is successful, we'll respond back with the authenticated username, then the JWT token and the JWT token expiry in seconds. Now in JWT token handler class, I'm creating a new method for generating the JWT token. This method accepts authentication request as parameter and return authentication response. First, let's check whether the username or password is null or empty. If yes, we'll return a null value. Next, we can validate the username and password. So here you can validate from the database but I'll just validate it from the hard-coded user accounts. If there is no user account with the provided username and password, we'll return a null value again. Now, 
let's create JWT token expiry date time object by just adding 20 minutes to the current date time. Next, we can create a claims identity object with multiple claims in it. The first claim is for username, the second one for user role. Next, I am creating a signing credentials object. You can see the security algorithm which I used. Then creating security token descriptor object in which we can provide the claims identity, token expiry date time and the signing credentials. After that, we can create the JWT security token handler object for creating the token. I am creating the security token using the create token method of the JWT security token handler. Finally, we can convert the token to a string value using the write token method of the JWT security token handler. As the JWT token is ready now, we can return the authentication response object from this method. We can provide the username from user account object. Then I am calculating the total seconds for the JWT token expiry. Finally, JWT token is the token which we created now. So that's it needed in JWT token handler class. Next, I'm creating an extension class for JWT authentication dependency injection. Let's name it as custom JWT auth extension. I'm making this a public static class. Now inside it, I'm creating a public static method named add custom JWT authentication, which accepts iService collection as a parameter. For iService collection, we need to install a library from Nuket Package Manager. Let me search for microsoft.extensions.dependencyinjection.abstractions. I'm installing it. Now we can add the dependency injection methods for JWT authentication. Services.addAuthentication and let's provide the value for default authenticate scheme. It is JWT barrow defaults dot authenticate scheme then default challenge scheme is also jwt bearer defaults dot authenticate scheme next adding jwt bearer i'm providing false for require https metadata then true for save token now let's assign the token validation parameters Validate issuer signing key should be true. Then validate issuer, let it be false. Then validate audience, also false. Issuer signing key is new symmetric security key of the bytes of our security key in JWT token handler class. That's it needed to be done while adding the dependency injection. Now let's create a new web API service for user account authentication. So I am searching for Web API project template and selecting it. Let the project name be Authentication Web API. Clicking on Next button. I'm checking the configure for HTTPS checkbox and enable Open API support checkbox. Let's create the project now. Let me remove the Weather Forecast API controller and the model class. We don't need them. Now let's create a new API controller. Let the name be account controller. We need to access the JWT authentication manager class library project from this API project. So let's add the project reference. Now I'm creating a private read-only object of JWT token handler, which is in our JWT authentication manager project. Then let's create the constructor for account controller class and assign the value of the object. In order the constructor to receive the object as a parameter, we need to inject JWT token handler as a dependency. I am adding it as a singleton service. Now coming back to account controller, let's create an HTTP post method to authenticate the user. This method will accept the authentication request as a parameter and returns the authentication response. Now here, I'm just calling the generate JWT token method 
which we have created in JWT token handler. Next, we must check whether the authentication response is null, as we are returning null values if the user account does not exist. So if it is null, we'll return unauthenticated response. Otherwise, we can return the authentication response object what we received from generate JWT token method. Now let's add Docker Orchestrator support for the authentication web API, choosing Docker Compose as the Docker Orchestrator and Linux as the Docker Operating System. The Docker file got created, I'm just opening it. Also let's open the Docker Compose YAML file. Here you can see the authentication web API container details. I'm just assigning a container name, let it be authentication API, then adding backend network inside the network section. Now let's add the authentication web API details in oscillate.json file. So I'm opening it from oscillate API gateway project. Now under routes section, let's add it. The upstream path template is slash API slash account. In upstream HTTP method, we only need post method. Downstream scheme is HTTP. Let me add downstream host and ports as well. Then downstream path template is again slash API slash account. Now let's test the authentication API by running the Docker Compose project. In the containers window, you can see that the authentication API container is running. Let's test the API in Postman. In the left side pane named My Workspace is already showing the other microservice APIs. Let me add a new folder and name it as Authentication Web API. Now let's add a new request inside that folder. The method is HTTP POST. Let me provide the URL for Authentication API. Now I'm providing the body content in JSON format. Username is admin. Then the password is admin123. We got 200 OK response and you can see the response content in which we have the username JWT token and the expires in values. Let's also test with user 0 and credentials and we got the response. Now let me provide some invalid username and password. You can see the status code is showing 401 unauthenticated now. So the API is working fine. Let me save it and name it as authenticate. We can use this saved API request after implementing in other services. Now we are going to see how we can implement the authentication from microservices. Let's implement the authentication in Customer Web API. I am adding the project reference in Customer Web API project. We can see the reference inside the dependencies section. Now let's add the dependency injection in the program.cs class. Builder.services. Here we can call the custom extension method which we have created. As we have created the extension method, we can simply call the method to add the dependency injection. Also, please make sure you have added the app.use authentication and app use authorization methods in the program.cs class. Now inside the customer controller, I am providing the authorize attribute for get customers method. So that means the user should be authenticated to call this method. Next, I am providing the authorize attribute along with role administrator for create method. So the user should not only authenticate but also have administrator role to call this method. Then for update method, I am providing authorize attribute with administrator and user roles. So the user should have either administrator or user role to access this method. Now let's run the application and test the APIs using Postman. 
First, let's try to execute the get customers API method and you can see that we have received 401 unauthorized response. Now let's get a JWT token from authenticate API method and provided the credentials for admin user. Let's copy this token from the response and use it in the authorization header of getCustomers method. Now we have received 200 OK response. That means API execution is successful. There are no customers registered and that is why it is not showing any records. So first, let's try to create a customer. Let the body cannot be the same. We can provide the authorization header now. Got 200 OK response. Now let's try the get customers method again. We can see the customer data, so it is working perfectly. Now let's try with the user 01 credentials. I'm just replacing the token in authorization header. The get customers method is working fine with this user as well. Now let's try the create method. You can see the 403 forbidden response as the create method will only allow users with administrator role. Now let's try the update method. The update method should allow both user roles. We got 200 OK response. Let's check whether the data got updated. So all are working fine. Hope you are clear with the authentication from microservices. Next, we are going to see how we can implement authentication from Ocelot API Gateway. So first, let's add the project reference in the Ocelot API Gateway project. Now we can do the JWT authentication dependency injection. Also, don't forget to add app.useAuthentication and app.useAuthorization methods. Now let's implement the authentication in the Ocelot configuration JSON file. This time, I'm implementing it in the product web API. We can use authentication options for implementing authentication. Inside that, the authentication provider key is bearer. Then allowed scopes. Now, let's try this API methods in Postman. So you can see that the get products ABA method is returning 401 unauthorized response without authorization header. So let's try by providing the authorization header. Now it is working fine. We got 200 OK response. Let's create a product now. The product got saved successfully. Next, let's see how we can implement role-based authorization in Ocelot configuration. For that, we need to make a small change in JWT token handler class. This claim types dot role is a string value which contains a URL kind of value in it. We can change it to a symbol string value as it may throw error if used in Ocelot configuration JSON file. Now in Ocelot configuration, we can provide route claims requirement. Then provide the same string value here and the role to be allowed. Now let's test this using pose map.
We have created a new product successfully using admin credentials. We can also see the products using get products method. Now let's try with the other user. It is showing 403 forbidden response, so the role based authorization is working fine. Now I'll just show you the rate limiting functionality of the Ozolet API Gateway. Let's use the Order Web API for that. We can use rate limit options to enable this functionality. Client whitelist is an array that contains the whitelisted clients. It means that the client in this array will not be affected by the rate limiting. Let it be empty. Then enable rate limiting. It should be true if we need to enable rate limiting. Then period value specifies the period that the limit applies to, such as 1s for 1 second, 5m for 5 minutes, 1h for 1 hour, 1d for 1 day, and so on. If you make more requests in this period than the limit allows, then you need to wait for period time span to elapse before you make another request. Let me provide 60s. We can also provide it as 1m. Next is period time span. This value specifies that we can retry after a certain number of seconds. I'm providing 60 seconds for that as well. Limit is value specifies the maximum number of requests that a client can make in a defined period. Let it be 1. Now let's try the API methods in Postman. First, let's try to create a new order using the create API method. We got 200 OK response. Now trying to execute get orders API method. We can see the order details which we created now. Let me try to execute the API again. Now we got 429 too many requests as a response. Also we can see some message in the response body. These can be customized. Let's see how it is. For that we can move to the global configuration section then provide rate limit options and inside that first let's provide a custom message for the response body. Let it be request not allowed. Next, we can customize the HTTP status code. I am providing 909. Let's try it in Postman. We got the order details in the initial request. Let me try again. Now you can see that we have received 909 HTTP status code and the custom message has been displayed as a response body. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Please subscribe, like and share this video. See you all in the next video. Thank you.